in the Bay Area before moving to rural Oakdale, California. Uh, he graduated from Art Center College in Pasadena, lived and worked in Los Angeles for about 10 years, and then settled in Portland, where he met Monica, and now they have their creative and often collaborative practice in a shared studio with a, what sounds like a really rich creative community. Salazar works in painting, drawing, sculpture, animation, and other media, creating often densely layered uh, universes that offer inspirational spaces for dreaming, thinking, and being. His aesthetic is a, is a hybrid of classic children's book illustrations and narratives, modernist abstraction, and the vernacular of contemporary illustration. Um, Narwhal Gallery in uh, Toronto put it nicely that it greatly occupies a genuinely charming space and aesthetic that serves to put forth this proposition for being ways of being in the world together. His work encourages an exploration and discovery as it evokes the wonders and imagination that many abandoned in childhood. Um, he's represented by Jonathan Levine Gallery in New York City. He's had several solo exhibitions there. He's also had two solo exhibits in Toronto at Narwhal, and actually one of them is open right now, right? Um, and been in many, many group shows, including uh, Juxtapose Terms 18, I, exclamation point, at the John Michael Kohler Art Center, a show called Hello, Exploring the Super Cute World of Hello Kitty at the Japanese American National Museum in Los Angeles. And he and Monica also did an artist in residence program through the John Michael Kohler Art Center uh, two years ago, which is how I first became familiar with their work. So please join me in welcoming Southern I just want to thank everybody who came out. Um, uh, that was a great introduction because it does a lot of the work for me. Um, th this is a, um, one of my paintings, and I chose this to kind of start the talk because it, uh, I think this image demonstrates a lot of uh, what I'm, uh, how I work and what I'm trying to do with the work. Um, it, a lot of the work has just evolved naturally over time, and so um, I'll show you it, it kind of goes in and out of a lot of different types of practices. But um, in general, uh, some of the things I've been very interested in is uh, trying to uh, describe memory um, and to create places where I can uh, reconnect to memories and explore uh, the association with memories and also set a stage where I can uh, just have a lot of fun making something and making a place where people can look at that image and they can also get lost and explore and, and so it's sort of a, a, a what goes in I hope comes out so, so just creating a space where I can explore and have memories and hoping that 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 will come back out um, in, in this particular image, uh, I was thinking a lot about uh, how being an artist, you can connect to childhood memories, and then you can come back to them from the other side as an adult, and you, you s can sort of reconnect, but also see them anew, which is what this image has. Um, I, another thing that I really uh, like to do is, um, through the process of play. Uh, a lot of my work stems from play, experimenting with materials and um, letting one mark lead to another. Um, and as a way to organize thoughts, I've, uh, I use a lot of world building. And in that world building, as the stage is set, I have a place where I can, um, I can allow memories to sort of just 
kind of bubble up again, and I can also um, allow my imagination to roam. And um, uh, so the first one was a large painting on wood, and this is a drawing on paper. Um, I, I tend to not be that interested in, in fitting everything into different categories. So as I'm working, um, a lot of times I'm not that sure where, what direction it's going to go in, if it's going to be a painting or a drawing, or uh, in this case, this is a sculpture. So a lot of these things just work with playing with materials, and, and as the stories develop, I, I try to let them tell me what, what to do. So um, I also uh, do a lot of drawing on paper. Um, yeah, this is kind of an example of uh, in, when I have a show, uh, working in, the, in galleries has allowed me a lot of freedom to not have to define what exactly it is I do. Um, knowing that somehow it has to go into a gallery space, that's, that's kind of fine for me because I can start a million things and they can become sculptures, they could be stories, they could be drawings. I, I can write ideas down, I can throw them away, or I can save them. So uh, in the end, this, is, this has been uh, kind of an ideal thing for me, to have blurry lines between what is going to be art, what's not going to be art, what is, is me just playing. And, and uh, um, here's another uh, example. Um, this was in a uh, museum in Riverside where I had a little more freedom to put whatever I wanted up, and uh, I just brought boxes of things that I had been making. So as you, as you kind of go through the room, there's stories and uh, things that I made on the spot, as well as paintings and sculptures. And um, I, I like to, to create somewhere where there's a, a balance between what's on purpose and what's on accident, and I'm never quite sure what it will be. Um, I also, when, when I was growing up, I was heavily inspired by comics and zines and uh, children's books. Uh, so an uh, early outlet for me was making my own comics and zines. Um, I grew, uh, I lived in a rural area, so being able to trade these and make them and send them to people through the mail was a big source of inspiration for me. So these are some of the books that I've made. Um, but uh, in, in keeping sketchbooks, there was this, there, there was sort of a natural progression for, for me to try to let the sketchbooks grow into other things. So I, as I would make sketchbooks and, and do collage and doodle ideas, they slowly started to turn into comics. So I had made a lot of comics that kind of grew out of that experience. Here's a couple examples. Um, so, I, I mean, probably like most people in this room, uh, you had the experience of being creative as a child. And for me, um, I think that that's the thing I always try to hold on to, because I never quite knew and still don't know what it is I want to be. Uh, like, I, I didn't have this specific dream of I want to be a gallery artist or a cartoonist or I... Uh, or an illustrator. I just knew I loved making stuff, and if I could, if I could live in the, a world of making stuff and be, um, and have that be my life, and have everything else wrap around just the activity of being creative, then that felt okay to me. So uh, when I did go to art school, I I thought I wanted to be a gallery artist, and I think I was mostly right. But I've done a little of everything, and uh, this is, these are examples of illus uh, different illustrations I've done. Um, and a lot of that work is, was done just as personal work for myself and, and as opportunities came to do something in print. Um, and, and when I got out of school, I, I just told myself that I didn't, I would take any opportunity I could to be, to survive as a creative person. So that I, I taught, and I did illustration, and I made books and screen printed shirts, and I did as many art shows as I could, and I just tried to put um, as much energy as I could into that being the life that I would uh, hope to have. Um, I, I think of uh, 
why it feels so important to me um, to spend a lot of time being trying to be creative and, and reconnect to the spontaneity and playfulness of being a kid. Um, I, I think of that as this time uh, at, when, you f when you're seeing everything for the first time and you're exploring the world, you are kind of hungry for that uh, to explore and investigate because everything is a discovery. Um, as you get older, I think it gets harder and I think the idea of play being something you're not really supposed to do um, as an adult, it, you kind of start to cut off the curiosity. And, and for me, I think, um, I think of play as being, um, it's not just a silly activity. I think it's almost like the essence of what it means to just be a person and to always have open eyes and look around you and be exploring and wondering what's under a rock and what's around the corner. Um, and uh, so a lot of the work I make is kind of about creating an environment that um, if it's not necessarily a real memory or a specific narrative, I, I like the idea of creating an environment that brings you back into that feeling of, um, of a world that's just unfolding constantly as a magical place that has no boundaries and there is no end to how much you can explore. And, and when you're done exploring the world around you, you have interior worlds that go on endlessly. And so um, maybe that's what I'm doing. I don't know. <laughs> But um, I, I think that as you get older, it gets harder and harder, and you sort of start to focus more on like, um, what are you building, and, and what does it add up to? And the idea of uh, play with no direct result, and no, th the idea of, of just making, being creative without a goal, without uh, something valuable to show, it, it becomes harder to hang on to that. And I, I think of it sometimes as you, uh, you spend all this time constructing and building, uh, you essentially just build a giant chair to sit in and to stop looking around at the world around you. Um, so like I said, uh, there's something, when, when I get stuck creatively, I think a lot of times, um, and especially uh, when you go to art school and you begin to interact with the art world or any, any kind of uh, institutional world of of creativity around you, it can be daunting. And for me, I, I just listen, I tune it out and try to listen to that voice that remembers what it's like just to squish clay and like scribble. And that's the thing that I remember of like, yes, there's this, this is just a pure uh, impulse to be creative that has joy that comes inherently with it. Uh, that's my first art show. So um, I, I'm still, uh, to this day, I collect a lot of things, and I'm very inspired by a lot of the books that I grew up with. Um, uh, I think in the, in the 60s and going into the 70s, there was this, this uh, a lot of books came out that were encouraging uh, creative impulses that that used whatever was around you and were written in a very uh, um, intuitive way. And I, as a kid, I grew up on a lot of those and I really loved them. And uh, I have, I don't know, probably over 100 of these books that I've collected. Here's a few. Um, but I, I love that idea and I think because it takes a lot of the preciousness away from the idea of being a fine artist or being a professional artist. So. Um, Sometimes I just look at these books just to remember that it's fun. To make something is fun. And that is, that's important, I think. This was uh, particularly a favorite book when I was in grade school. Um, it is full of these wonderfully atrocious junk sculptures that um, I, I think when I looked at them as a kid, what I remember was like this is just made out of garbage, and there's a whole book of it. Um, it just that that's just like flinging doors open um, because they were saying this is art. And I checked this out of my school library, 
And I loved it so much that I, I checked it out over and over again every week um, so that the little slip inside the book just had my name um, like 15 times in a row until the librarian forced me to stop checking it out. So um, thanks to the internet, I found my own copy now. Um, so as a kid, uh, I'm one of four kids, and my parents uh, would take us to, to work with them sometimes. Uh, and one of the things I remember is from, I think, kind of growing up with those books, I, I would think of wherever we were as being an environment to try to create something. And, um, and luckily, a lot of the jobs that they would do, they would sometimes have like a second job or a, a, an evening job. and, and uh, some things they did were working on remodeling houses, and they would uh, do janitorial work where they would bring us kids in and we would go empty garbages, and I would look through the garbages for stuff to play with. And, um, and it sounds sad, but I re it's a, was a really happy childhood, and I love my parents. Um, but they, you know, they were just doing what they had to to survive, and so I remember my brother and I would bring things home and they all became toys and they would become fake machines. And so uh, I think I, I have a lot of good memories of the idea of just creating with the things that you could find around you and, and starting to build a world that you could play and have, let your imagination kind of roam around inside that, that world. Um, so as I got older, um, I, I just began to, all, to sort of look for treasures everywhere, and my parents got um, began to be involved in antiques. And uh, as a as a young teenager, they would take me to flea markets, and I began looking for treasures there to make stuff with. Um, and uh, here's my dad in his antique shop. So you can see uh, there there I think being around a lot of interesting objects and and thinking about those objects and their stories. Uh, that, that related, I think, to me, sort of to some of those early ideas of making stuff out of whatever was around you and responding to spontaneously, but also thinking about what is the story of an object when you hold it. Um, my mom is equally a collector, and both my parents uh, were very creative. Um, the, this is a section of my mom's studio um, where she collects she collects a lot of stuff too. Here's some other things that she's. If you open the drawers, they're just full of little things like this. So, um, uh, th these are all things that I I I think of as early things that kind of led me to making work the way I do now. Um, like I said, the, it was the, they're kind of fond memories of wandering around and using the activity of looking for things and finding things on the ground as a chance to not only just explore and, and be around in the world and look and look at things, but also everything is a possibility and an idea. And, and that alone, even without the following act of trying to create something, is um, such a joy, I think, to just look at something and imagine the possibilities. Um, so uh, I have asthma, and these are uh, asthma inhalers. Um, <laughs> so I've, um, yeah, just developed a habit of, of always playfully trying to create and make things, and, and not necessarily think like this is art, this is going to be a sculpture, but um, just to find joy in that process as an end to itself. Um, whether I'm camping or wandering around on the beach, I like to pick things up and see what I could make of them. And, and so these things kind of pile up a little bit. Uh, and, and in a way, they start to inform other processes down the road. This is uh, on long road trips. I'll bring clay and just make shapes that feel good. And, and it's kind of a just doodling, doodling with my hands. Or, um, uh, in the fall, Monica and I collected leaves, and I would draw on them. Um, and you know, I, I 
these are things that are they feel kind of temporary, and and I like that. I like that there's not a preciousness in it. Um, um, and this guy, for example, these are six. Uh, th these were all collected by the river on one day. These are pencils that I had laying around. That I started to carve into little people. And as and and maybe there's no idea in the beginning, but they start to tell stories, and, and I just try to follow that. The studio we have now is on the train track, so uh, another thing that I like doing is um, twisting wire and then watching it get smashed and seeing what the drawings look like afterwards. So, um, but of course, making stuff this way where there's no goal, end goal, is problematic. Um, I, I honestly think I would be happy just drawing and throwing it in a hole and never looking at it at it again, um, but no, that is not a job, fortunately. Um, so uh, the the act of daydreaming and, and all the, the things that's, that it can kind of lend into the work that is good, it's also, um, there. there's a lot of traps in that that I've found. Um, because you just start to get buried in things you don't finish or uh, there, there's a, as much fun as it is, it, it, there's, a, there's kind of like a fine line where it starts to be not fun. And I've, uh, I've learned, this is my, one of my mottos, uh, is you really have to, if you want to have a lot of fun and play, you also have to, you have to learn to work in a way that allows for that. So um, what is work to me? Um, it's stuff like this, just sitting there staring at something, trying to figure out what am I doing. Um, it's reading books that are not fun, like this one. Um, learning how to make lists, learning how to clearly identify goals. So um, these, these are things that I've, I've forced myself to do over time because I realize if I want to have a job that's this fun, I have to, I have to treat it like a job. And so um, I, I do these things. Um, I have a studio space where I go to work, and I love, I love getting up and going to a place and calling it work and, and sweeping and putting things away. Um, there's something about it where uh, there's, there's a joy in having a job, and there's a joy in the work. So um, I, I try to find as much joy in the work side as I can as well. This is. Uh, my studio. There's always a lot of stuff happening uh, simultaneously, and I, I like one thing leading to another. And the sculpture kind of gives ideas for drawings, and um, also it can be kind of maddening. So I have a lot of drawers where I put things away when I when I need to not look at it, not be distracted by too many things I've started. Um, so I'll I'll continuously have things started, but I'll put them away and then bring out the important things that are leading somewhere. Um, I also like to surround myself with all the things that I collect. Um, there's, there's something about collecting. Like I said, there's, the, there's sort of, uh, when you touch something that you know has a history, there's kind of this electricity to it in my mind, where you wonder where it came from. And I uh, have, <laughs> I don't know why, but I have tons of pencils. Um, and like, Similarly to the things my mom's collected, I started to very carefully put together what I keep in my studio. Because in being able to slide open a drawer and look at it, everything represents a potential idea. And um, so I, I think of these things strangely, even though nobody would ever give me this job, this is the job that I'm giving myself. And I'm kind of uh, strict about it. Because I think if I don't do this, then nobody you know, if I don't force myself to have a clear process, uh, who would give me this job? Nobody. So, uh, in looking at things, I, I, the ideas begin to emerge and things start to connect and I can begin to build a world out of it. And, um, and then in, in a way I try to format that back into collections and, uh, for example, these are all ideas, um, when traveling around the country and looking at all the different water towers. 
So I start, just started to see water towers when I got home in all the objects I had. Um, and uh, taking things like uh, when I, sometimes I have like a kind of nervous habit when I'm trying to uh, relax where I just want to start tying things together and weaving things. Um, it's a strange form of meditation for me. Um, so I try to develop, when I have things like that, uh, creative impulses that have no direction, I try to see them through to some sort of conclusion um, and follow them narratively where they can combine with the rest of the world that I've been creating. And, um, and I can just sort of give myself that place where I can dream. Um, one thing I've learned, though, is uh, ti tiny things like this and, and uh, being kind of in your own head a lot. Uh, history is not very kind to people who are spend most of their time in their own head. Um, and so that, that has kind of worried me um, because I, I do want this to be my job and I, I don't want to be starving. So I think a lot about how, how do I get what's in my head um, how do I create a world that can feel immersive and inviting to an audience so that I can ultimately share and have, um, have, have it be a positive experience to be a person who likes to make things and spend their time making things? Um, one thing that I learned over the years was uh, I really had to force myself to um, push past working on tiny things in sketchbooks. Um, after the sketchbooks begin to pile up, it's very hard to have anything to show for it and, and uh, to create an experience that feels immersive and inviting and uh, doesn't give somebody a headache. I, those are things that I ultimately realized I wanted. I wanted to, to create, um, you know, a, I guess a sort of magical experience so you could walk into uh, a space and enter into a world and allow yourself to to um, dream a little bit. So um, uh, being able to have a space where there's large things, and then, uh, for example, on this corner, there are a lot of tiny things and other worlds you can explore. Um, th those are things that I, I kind of equate as, uh, it's, it's very connected to the creative process, but I clearly identify them as homework I gave myself, like part of my job. How do I how do I make something that that connects in the way I hope it can connect um, and create creating installations and things that, that lead people into a space um, and I, and there's something really fun in that for me uh, going from the tiniest scale to the largest scale in the same room um, so for example this was a show I did a number of years ago where you walk into the room. Um, and uh, this was in New York at the Levine Gallery. And you're just uh, confronted with, with all these air balloons. And each one has, a, has different characters and, and a little bit of a story and how I worked with the different materials. Light bulbs and uh, found ornaments. And I think that might be a NyQuil bottle. Um, this was a sketch I did. And uh, again, I think um, as an example of drawing this was very fun. And initially, I, I used this as an um, idea to make a screen print from. But there was something that, uh, in drawing it, I, I pictured a certain experience that I still wanted to explore, even after you know, the sketch was done and the print was done. And I thought, uh, well, maybe I will create this into a larger painting. And, and so that this is, uh, again, like I think a lot of it is um, the process of trying to follow an idea and trying to push myself to not, not just leave it in the pile of papers in the hole, but to, to follow through and keep thinking, what, what is the thing I imagine and how can I make it? How can I push myself? Um, ultimately, I, I had thought about it some more, and I realized it really wanted to be something that you could experience dimensionally and really feel like you are in the world. So um, 
and this uh, this one is one I worked with Monica, and I had the drew out how I wanted to make him, had the materials, and she sewed the the character here, and uh, we did this um, in Switzerland. We installed it in Switzerland and also in Los Angeles. But um, there was something like this. The, this went uh, this moment actually. I just remember this was not this is not it's the same idea, but it's not the experience you would get from a from a print or even a painting. So uh, that there's something very satisfying in that for me, and and I think of that as like a you know doing good work, pushing pushing past the earliest ideas. Um, here's another example, and this is such a I had this dinosaur in the studio for a long time, and I just loved his expression, and I put him on my shelf. And eventually, I made a um, the little warrior, and I just <laughs> and, and and really not for any reason, just to make myself laugh. Uh, I liked that he had this um, sort of gloriously foolhardy look, and he's holding his sword, and he's riding this uh, aggressive but kind of silly-looking dinosaur. And um, I, wor I kept looking at it and thinking, well, what, what does this want to be? And I, I tried to contain it into some sort of presentation. Like a, I had it in a tank. I had it on a shelf. Um, and I kept putting it back. And then it sat in the studio for years until I, one day I just realized, oh, um, the story of this is how little he is compared to whatever it is that he's going to be facing. So. In this case, um, this was an installation in Denver, and um, and and that it took a long time to know because I had that guy and I was focused on him and I thought that that was the story, but it really was about the whole world of of what's happening in his what's happening in his world and how you can walk into that and, and kind of get a glimpse. This is um, and this is made out of a whole. A uh, bunch of found materials, uh, coffee cans and jars, and uh, these are scraps from the wool mill in Pendleton, in Oregon. And this is uh, insulation foam. And uh, yeah, and there's the planets were just balls from the 99 cent store. Um, so uh, I, all right, I mentioned earlier that. Keeping sketchbooks has always been a very compelling habit that is, um, I spend a lot of time doing it in spite of trying not to. Um, it's just so intimate and I enjoy it so much. But um, as a job of being an artist, wanting to be an artist full time, um, I've had to learn how do I how do I sort of commandeer those impulses and, and those habits and have them work for me to help me be um, productive as an exhibiting artist? Or um, how, how do I find a way to share it? Um, there are definitely certain sketchbooks that I would never cut up, but I've also started making sketchbooks where I carry them everywhere. I fill them up. They, as an interesting story or character or something happens, I have a place for it. Um, these accordion fold books are really good because they're, you draw on one side. And, um, and I had done this a little bit earlier and uh, would make them into sculptures. These were I made into houses. Um, but eventually, there's just so much of it that I started to be much more uh, free with cutting everything up constantly. Um, so now I, I have dozens of sketchbooks and I'm constantly cutting them up. and I. I enjoy organizing them back into scrapbooks so that I can find different things as I'm looking for them. Um, whether I'm looking for antennas or patterns or little people. Um, and in working, I work on wood mostly. Uh, a lot of mixed media on wood. So I can collage a lot of these things into the pieces I'm making. And um, it's something that I've, I've always done, I think, uh, from early on. but I. I began to develop it more as a process as I realized how much I enjoyed working uh, on scraps and with whatever I had around me. So 
So um, in this instance, on a large painting, I can create something that I have a clear goal in mind and I have a story. But I also, there's a world that's developing and there's, there's a lot of room to play and see. I'll, I will lay out collages and see what seems to be fitting. And it changes a lot. And, and there's something about it that I, I really enjoy that process. Um, so uh, this is the part where I talk about Monica a little bit. Um, she, I tried to get her on stage, but she, she wouldn't come up with me. So uh, afterwards, she'll answer questions too. Um, but when I met Monica, uh, I felt like I, I saw a person that felt very compatible with me, and we, we began to introduce each other to our respective worlds, and we decided that um, we fell in love, and we uh, discussed a lot of creative ideas, and we got married, and we moved out to the country for a little while. And during this time, it was, uh, it, in my mind, there were, there were all these swelling ideas of all the adventures that I would have with this person, and we would talk about it. And, and this is sort of a painting about all the, the things that were, uh, where we were living out in the country. All, these are all the characters and the, just um, the stories happening around us. But we were also looking for a place to go and thinking what was down the road. Um, and a, as we began discussing uh, what that meant, we, we were just kind of daydreaming, but we, we thought about living on the road. We discussed um, uh, a lot of creative ideas that were evolved Re they revolved around storytelling and uh, some of the things that I've said about objects having meaning. And, um, and we were also just interested in seeing a lot of things together and having that shared experience. Um, and we had talked about bartering and swapping and, and all these things that we, we found were important to us, just these concepts. Um, and then we thought, well, why don't we create a project? Why don't we start with all of those things and work backwards? We want to wander. We want to hear stories. We want to go uh, to, and, and I don't know if, you've, if anyone's traveled as a couple, but when you do travel, a lot of times um, it's hard to hear people's stories and get to know people when you're only in a place very shortly if you are traveling as a, as a couple. You don't really stumble into that. So we thought, well, what, maybe we could create a project where all those things are part of it. And uh, trading, storytelling, objects, wandering. Uh, we decided to call it the Trading Tortoise. Um, we set aside six months after we got married to wander the country. Um, and what we wanted to do was we just wanted to trade objects and hear stories. So. We would set up a, a turtle-shaped tent, and we would sit inside it, and we would invite people to come out and talk to us and bring in objects. And we brought objects with us to, to start it. And as we traded with people, we would have them write down their story, and we would take those objects to the next city. So and it, and essentially, we created this kind of chain effect of objects and stories traveling with us. And um, we... And, and what happened was it, it gave us, it brought out a lot of really nice people in every place we went to because they were people who in some way had that similar thing, that they, they had value in telling a story with an object. And uh, it was a very intimate experience. We, uh, oh, and so we launched the Kickstarter for this because there was no money, it was all free. Uh, we paid for it through the Kickstarter and by offering things that we made as rewards. And um, it was uh, successful more, much more than we imagined. Um, we traveled to 33 different cities. And, uh, and here's, here's when we were first building it. Um, so we began with an art show and we built it in the gallery and then we began the tour from the gallery. And we lived on the road for six months, setting it up all over the country. Um, 33 cities, 22,000 miles across the country, four times. And we just met the most wonderful people. 
and um, every day we still talk about all these experiences and uh, as for the beginning of a marriage it was uh, you know living in a car for six months and doing this was a very interesting test and it wor and it worked out like it was a gamble and it totally worked out we we began our marriage with uh, just a complete odyssey of um, seeking out wonderful creative people, hearing stories, having things that we could share and experience together and the and the um, and I think just just on a human level, just being able to do that and connect with people, it especially now, um, in in the age of the internet, it is very difficult to have those experiences with strangers. And I, uh, we felt very lucky to get to do that. Um, while traveling, I, I carried a case, um, and I I worked on the road, um, set up in a, in motels, and make stuff as we were going. And I tried to sort of uh, process what was happening, what these stories and these experiences. And and um, it really it really changed the way I look at objects. Um, uh, the value is not on a collectible, but on the story and on the, the spirit of an object. Um, I began to think not only of the, how they were souvenirs for those people as a tangible way to, to be able to, to, you know, just like touch a good memory, or even, even like a painful memory, but to have something that you could hold that was real and as real as you feel about something. Um, and and I, I think that that is kind of, I learned through this process, it was a common thread in all the, the work I've been doing, um, that it's, a, it's not just about the materials or the narrative, it's about the way you feel and the experience, um, and how ultimately that's not, that's intangible, but it's so nice to have a thing that you can look at and you know it'll awaken those feelings in you. Um, while we were traveling, I just started to think of everything as a souvenir. Um, the the signs across the American landscape felt I wanted to collect them, and so I started making work that was a way to collect something that I couldn't collect. Um, so these were just some of the favorite signs that I saw, um, and I showed a little bit of this earlier. But these this is a way to collect um, using materials I had found and creating stories that connected to some of the things people had told us, um, the, the water towers across the American landscape. Um, all of this went into a show, and this was a show I had at the end of the tour uh, at Jonathan Levine Gallery in New York. And, um, and once it was all up and, and we set the tour to up again, it, uh, I think only then did we kind of realize what, what we had experienced. And we're still processing it. It's, it was a lot. But um, the idea of what, what are the things you bring with you and how important are they? Um, after the show, after working in, in a lot of sketchbooks and, and kind of being living basically on the road and in, on couches and hotels and in the car, uh, I started to crave like being able to have the freedom to have a studio and work big again. Um, so I began to do some mural projects uh, once we landed. Uh, this is a collaboration with my friend Brendan Monroe. And, um, and this was another thing. I, I, I'm a very, uh, I'm kind of a hermit who likes to work intimately. So this was a challenge that I, I kind of gave myself. Can I get on the cherry picker and paint a giant wall and just have a good time? And I found that I could, um, and so I, I just really enjoyed it, and I started to take some other mural um, commissions. This is in Toronto, it's a Drake, and um, this was at a, a TED, TED Med conference in San Francisco. Um, so after, after that, uh, I started to work on my next show, which is the one that is up right now. Um, and I wanted to take a lot of that energy and continue to work on some larger pieces. But I also, uh, 
I felt like I had come around to a point where I could look again at the process. I had set up a studio, I had some time to sort of experiment, and I wanted to just get as lost. I, I basically just wanted to spend the time in my head to look at everything, to, to sort of allow for the creative impulses to pop up and tell me what to do next. So um, I started with no theme, but I just told myself I would just do all the things I like to do and see where that's going to take me. Um, and I, and I, it actually was a lot harder than I thought because I essentially felt like I really had to learn how to navigate inside my own head better than I had before with, with purpose um, and to really enjoy exploring inner, inner landscapes and things that were not necessarily memories but just feelings. And, and that's, that's hard because I don't, it's something that you don't know what that looks like. So to make it was, a, um, through making it was, was how I could see it. Um, I also just try to um, indulge that part of me that just wants to just doodle incessantly small things. And, um, and I begin to organize those into collections and, um, and, and allow myself just to make little drawings that had no purpose. And essentially what I realized, the only thing that they could be is their own art show. So this one on the right is, is like an art show and a drawing. Um, I also allowed the fragmented impulses to help me steer um, larger ideas and, and, and they, I think what happened was I found ways to collectively develop systems that could catch them. And, and in the past, all that stuff that ended up in boxes now, there are systems that catch it. And I, I felt so much, um, it was, it was, it's been a nice breakthrough because now I don't feel bad when I'm carrying these notebooks and sketchbooks everywhere because I have places for them to go. They can go into buildings, they can go into collections, they can go into pretend imaginary art shows that go into real art shows. Um, and, and, and working on everything at once, uh, they, they all, the pieces kind of begin to inform each other. And I, I just ultimately wanted to give myself uh, permission to let things grow organically and, um, and carry that with me and see what world it describes and try to catch these fleeting impulses and and let them turn into something. Um, I also was still exploring the idea of what it means to collect and what it means to have, um, to use a connection to process and collecting and objects and making art as a way to explore your own memories. And um, these are pieces that explore those ideas. And that's the show. Um, that's up right now. Just got back from it. Um, and that is it for my images. Um, so we could do questions now. I think I ended a little early. Okay.